Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we'll be discussing probability distributions. All right, and when we're looking at probability distributions, there are a few factors that matter. There are some requirements that generally tell us whether they are valid or invalid, or whether or not they can be used to compute mean standard deviation and variances for acceptable forms of probability distributions. Now, our two requirements for calculating mean variance and standard deviation or completing a distribution table for probabilities are that the first being the sum of the probabilities of x, our px column, must always equal to 1. Our second condition for this requirement to compute our mean standard deviation and variance is that each probability on the column must be between 0 to 1 inclusive. That means it could be 0 and it could also be 1. But all the probabilities cannot be less than 0 and they cannot be greater than 1. All right. So let's check which of these four probability distributions are valid and uh, useful for computing the mean variance and standard deviation. So to do this we're going to take the sum of all the p of x as we see here. And for the first column here we're adding. We're going to take the sum of p of x and the sum of p of x in this case is going to give us 0 0.1 plus 0 0.2 plus 0 0.3 plus 0 0.4. Make sure you're using a calculator to do this, and this gives me 1.0. So the first requirement is satisfied. The second requirement being that each probability must be between 0 and 1 inclusively. And here I see that there's no value less than 0 and no value greater than 1. So this checks off. So we're good to go with the first probability distribution. Let's check the second one here. Now I'm going to take my sum here. I take my sum of p of x and I add them 0 0.25 plus 0 0.50 plus 0 0.75 plus negative 0 0.5. That's going to give me a grand sum of 1.0. That passes the first requirement. The second requirement is that every value between 0 and 1. This is good. This is good. This one's good. This one's not good. It's negative 0 0.5. It's less than 0. So we're going to void this one and say this one's no good. Let's go to the third one here, and we're going to again take the sum of p of x. So we have the sum of p of x here, the probability distribution set. We have 0 0.35 plus 0 0.15, that's exactly 0 0.5, plus 0 0.4, that's 0 0.9, plus 0 0.15, 0 0.15, that's going to give us 1.05. And that makes this probability distribution invalid we cannot compute the probability distribution with this. Moving on to our last one, here we see we have a little bit of a problem to get the sum of p of x. We're going to first have to convert these fractions into decimals. Good thing for us, you guys have calculators. So when calculating these, make sure you divide each one perfectly. Now here we get 0 0.3. For this one we get 0 0.2. This is 0 0.1. And finally, for 9 over 20 is 0 0.45. Now when we add these, this add the extra little decimal place to make this friendlier for me. And this is going to give me a 5 for the last digit. Next digit, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 10. 0. And the 1 carries over. So this is also invalid. Now, for those of you who are watching and probably need a little bit more detail, sometimes we do have two special cases where the sum of x, p, x, I mean the sum of p of the probabilities are greater than 1 or less than 1. And those two discrepancies are when we have a sum that gives us 1.001 or a sum of 0 0.999. And the only reason why I'm mentioning this is because I'm coming across these fractions and remembering if I have 1 third plus 1 third and 1 third and I change these to decimals, I get 0 0.33. 0 0.33 and 0 0.33. However, if I add these fractions, I get perfectly 3 over 3, which make a perfect 1. If I add these decimal numbers, I get 0 0.999. And this is only a special case scenario, so keep that in mind whenever checking for your sum of, ec of, your sum of probabilities. However, since we have one table that actually works and is valid, Let's compute the probability distribution table for that value. And let's compute our mean, our variance, and our standard deviation. So since this one works, let's get this out of the way. And let's get our formulas in the way, right? 
So let's start with our mean formula. Our mean is called the expected value. And our expected value formula is the sum of the column x times the p of x. And that's going to give us our mean. To get our standard deviation, or our variance first, let's start with variance, we're going to take the sum of our x squared times p of x and subtract the value of the mean squared. And finally, to get our standard deviation, just our sigma, we take the square root of the sigma squared. And this is the variance, and we're taking the square root of the variance. So this one here is our mean. This is our variance. And this one here is our standard deviation. OK, now that we have our formulas for each one, let's complete the table so that we can get to these values. And to complete this table, we're going to have to compute a few other columns that we're going to create here. I'm going to give you guys the details to these columns right now in just a second. So we already have our sum of p of x in this column, and this is important. And besides this, we're going to need our x times our probabilities. And this is going to be used to compute our mean. As you can see, the mean is the expected value, which is the sum of the column of x times the probability of x. Next to this, we're going to have x squared. And finally, we're going to have x squared times p of x, which is going to be used to compute both our variance and our standard deviations. All right. So now, to compute our x times p of x, we're literally taking our x column and we're multiplying it by our p of x column. So 0 times 0 0.10 is 0. I'm going to add a couple decimal places because I see every number here is going to have a result with two decimal places. Now for those of you who are watching the video, please be sure to use your calculator while making these calculations as errors will lead you to the wrong solution. All right, 1 times 0 0.20 is just 0 0.20 for the second line here. 2 times 0 0.30, 0 0.60. And 3 times 0 0.40 is 1.20, all right? And now if we take the sum of this column, we're going to find what we call our expected value. So I'm going to put that in the blue color here. We have the first value is 0 on the right-hand side. The second value, another 0. We carry the 1 over, right? And 1 plus 1 is 2. Our expected value is just 2. So I'll make a note of this right here. So we have our mean already. One down, two to go. All right, let's continue computing across the board. Our next value is taking the column of x and squaring each value found on the column and inserting it for our x squared value. Zero squared will be just zero. One squared would just give us one. Two squared will give us four. And three squared will give us nine. That's not such a bad column to make. We don't have to take some of this column either to compute anything that we have left over. So let's go ahead and make the final column. So we take this fourth column, and we're going to multiply it by the column of p of x, which is our second column. So we're literally taking this value times this value and putting it over here. All right, so 0 0.10 times 0 is just 0 0.00. Then we have 0 0.20 times 1 is again 0 0.20. 0 0.30 times 4 is 1.20 and 0 0.40 times 9 is 3.60. Now as we take the sum of this column, I'm going to put that in blue so that we can identify with our sum of x squared times p of x here. And we have zeros on the right hand. 2 plus 2 plus 6 is 10. Carry that one over. That becomes 2, and 3 is 5. So I'm going to notarize all our sums here on the right-hand side so we can have a clear identification with each one. Our sum of x times p of x is exactly just 2. And our sum of x squared times p of x is exactly 5. And again, the first one up here is just the mean. 
So we have our mean value is just 2.0. Our sum of x squared times p of x will be used to compute our variance. So let's start the variance calculation then. So our variance is going to be the sum of x squared times p of x, which is 5. And we're subtracting the mean value squared, right? So the mean value is 2, and we're squaring that 2. And this is 5, then take away 4, which is just 1. So our variance value is 1. And to do our standard deviation, we're just going to take the variance and take the square root of it. The square root of 1 is just 1. And there we have our standard deviation. So remember, when doing this, if your sum of probabilities adds up to 1 and each value of probabilities between 0 and 1, you can do this and complete this table. All right? Thank you.